Thank you so much, uh, Mr. President. Members, SR 75 recognizes March 2022 as Women's History Month. Congress first acknowledged Women's History Month in March of 1987. Now, many times in floor remarks around a resolution like this, and I will remind us that we have taken up this resolution uh, every year for more than a decade, there's often the recitation of many women throughout history, women that might even be obscure to some of us, who have accomplished phenomenal things, whether in industry, athletics, innovation, the law, you name it. But I have never liked having to, to bring out, in particular, feats of women, because it seems to me it should be obvious to all of us. And if we do not have 50 or 60 women in our minds that we can immediately bring to mind that have done as phenomenal things as the 50 or 60 men that might come to our minds, then I urge you to do so because they're more than abundant. And yet, these 35 years later, since Congress designated Women's History Month, and notice, while we have Black History Month, so many other history months, we have no Men's History Month. But anyway, all these three years, 35 years later, the value of women is still overlooked. Women are still paid less than men, 83 cents to the dollar, and if you are a woman of color, that, do that amount drops further. Work as caregivers, which still in our society falls primarily to women, goes unpaid and unrecognized. And if they are paid, the wages are always behind other categories of employment and fall well behind the rising cost of women. And of course, we are facing the circumstance where women are still not protected under the Constitution against discrimination on the basis of sex. Now, the Constitution requires that 38 states ratify an amendment for it to be an amendment of the Constitution. The ERA, the Equal Rights Amendment, now has 38 states who have ratified it. So why isn't it already published in our Constitution? Because of an arbitrary deadline that the Congress passed. There is nothing in the Constitution that puts a deadline on the ratification of an amendment. And in fact, there's at least one amendment that took over 200 years to ratify. But that's for another day. Women are still underrepresented in boardrooms, the C-suite, the elected office, and include in, including in this legislative body, both houses. We're doing better, but we've got a long way to go. And all of these discrepancies are far more glaring for women of color. So I'm proud to bring this resolution forward as vice chair of the Women's Caucus. And as we usually do pre-pandemic, we have our floor recognition of women of the year that each of the members recognize. But due to the pandemic, we've not done that for some years. But we know that all of you have had the opportunity to honor a woman in your district and have received certificates and such to uh, provide those women. All of the Senate Legislative Women's Caucus members are co-authors, and I respectfully ask for your I vote. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Members, so I really appreciate the comments by our colleagues. And as I referenced in my opening, I could have mentioned many, many, many women. I could have mentioned many of the women in our state government, whether it was our first female Supreme, uh, California Supreme Court Justice, Rose Byrd, who I think history will show was more easily targeted for the recall that she experienced because of her gender. Um, March Fong Yu, our first female Secretary of State. Roseanne Vuich, our first uh, female senator who had to get a bathroom because uh, we didn't have them for women. But let me just recall a very vivid memory I had when I was in eighth grade and I was one of the four student officers of my Catholic school government, student government. And I was the secretary, I believe. My other friend, Candy, was the treasurer. And the president and vice president were boys. But Candy and I found over the course of our year in student government as the officers that we were doing all the work. So I told Candy, I'm like, Candy, we got to go see the principal, Sister Patricia Marie. And we, this is not fair. 
Well, how come we're not the president and the vice president? Because those two guys got to stand at the mic at all the, you know, when our graduations, at the various ceremonies, we were in the back doing all the work. So I'm like, let's go talk to Sister Patricia Marie. Candy's like, no, no, Nancy, no, no. I'm like, no, we're going. So Candy and I go see Patricia, Sister Patricia Marie. Candy won't say a word, and I say, Sister Patricia Marie, Candy and I should be the president and the vice president. We're doing all the work. Those two boys, that's not fair. And basically, I don't remember exactly what she said, but it was kind of like, get used to it. Well, I'm sorry, I'm never going to get used to it. And I hope that at some point that we will not have to have Women's History Month because we, we just like we don't have Men's History Month. Now, that probably won't happen while I am still a senator since I'm going to be termed out in two years. But I certainly hope it is still while I'm breathing on this planet. And with that, I ask for your I vote.